Hello everyone and welcome to the third video on relationships between two quantities. In this video, I will be taking up the topic of inverse superposition, which next to direct superposition are the simplest kinds of relationships that we see. Inverse superposition problems are the kinds of problems where there are two quantities whose values are related such that an increase or decrease in the value of one of them by a certain amount forces a decrease or increase in the value of the other by the same amount. You notice that here we're talking about an increase, decrease, and here we're talking about a decrease, increase. And so if the value of one of them increases by a certain amount, then the value of the other decreases by the same amount. One goes up by two, the other goes down by two. And if the value of one of them decreases by a certain amount, the value of the other increases by the same amount. So if one of them goes down by five, the other goes up by five. This kind of relationship is known as inverse superposition. In the designation inverse superposition, the word inverse means opposite behaviors. One goes up, the other goes down. Direct means same behavior. They both go up or they both go down. The word superposition means that the changes happen through additions and subtractions. The equation for inverse superposition in standard form is q2 is equal to k, which is a constant that has a known value, minus q1. The key part is that q1 is being subtracted. Now to see how an equation like this captures a relationship like this, let's take a look at an example. Let's say k has the value 20. Now that value is not going to change. And now, let's say that Q1 is 4. That means Q2 is 16, which is 20 minus 4. Now, let's say we increase the value of Q1 by 3. Q1 was 4. Now it's 7. But now we are subtracting 3 more. So we expect that Q2 will go down by 3. Q1 goes up by 3. You subtract 3 more. Q2 goes down by 3. This is how equations like this capture the meaning of inverse superposition problems. Now in this equation, as in direct superposition problems, K can assume any shape and form that it wants. It can be negative K minus Q1. If k is 4, negative k is negative 4, which is also a known fixed value. It could be that you have root k minus q1. In all cases, what makes this relationship, the relationship between q2 and q1, inverse superposition, is that q1 is being subtracted on the other side of the equation. In the standard form, as in direct superposition problems, one of the quantities is isolated. And on the other side, if it's an inverse superposition problem, then Q1 is subtracted. Q1 can also appear first. So now we read this as negative Q1. You can think of it as 0 minus Q1 and think of the negative sign as a subtraction symbol. Q1 is being subtracted. This makes the relationship between Q2 and Q1 inverse superposition. Again, it makes no difference what happens to K. You may subtract K if you want. You may add root K if you want. So long as Q1 is being subtracted, you have an inverse superposition relationship. And now there is another form for inverse superposition problems. And this form is the conservation form. And this one says that 
uh, there are two quantities whose values are related such that their sum is constant. If you add their values, you always end up with a fixed amount. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If these two quantities are related that one gains two, the other loses two, in total, they don't lose anything. Imagine this. Imagine that you have some money in your left pocket, some money in your right pocket. Now, if you take some money from your left pocket, so the value comes down, and put it in your right pocket, and the value goes up, in total, you haven't changed the total amount of money that you have. So the sum of the values of the two quantities is constant. And we can write this down as an equation. Q2 plus Q1 is equal to K. As usual, in the standard form, one of the quantities is isolated. In the conservation form, the constant is isolated. And again, note how the terminology fits the uh, idea of inverse superposition. When we talk about, uh, or conservation, when we talk about Q2 plus Q1 being equal to K, if K is constant, that means Q2 plus Q1 doesn't change. Q2 can change, Q1 can change, but the sum will always be a constant. And so the sum doesn't change. And in some sense, then, its value is being conserved. Now, we can go from the standard form to the conservation form. In the standard form, Q2 is isolated. And now, in the conservation form, we have to isolate K. And that means that we take subtraction by Q1 on the right side and turn it into addition by Q1 on the left side. Some of the properties of inverse superposition. As far as changes go, change in the value of one quantity is equal to the negative of the change in the value of the other quantity. So if Q2 goes up by 2, Q1 goes down by 2. Symmetry. So again, the question is, suppose we know that Q2 is inversely superpositional to Q1. Does it also mean that Q1 is inversely superpositional to Q2? So when we say that Q2 is inversely superpositional to Q1, we mean that if you change Q1, you change Q1 and see its effect on Q2. But when I say that Q1 is inversely superpositional to Q2, it means that we change Q2 and observe the, the effect on Q1. And symmetry does exist for inverse superposition. And that means that if I know that increasing Q2, let's say, by 4, forces Q1 to go down by 4, I know it works the other way as well. If I increase Q1 by 4, then Q2 goes down by 4. So symmetry does exist. We can actually show this to be true. Starting with Q2 is inversely superpositional to Q1. And that means Q2 is equal to K minus Q1. Now, let's rearrange this equation and solve it for Q1. Switch sides. Take K to the other side. Solve for Q1. And you notice that it has the same form as the standard form. Q1 is equal to K, and now we have minus Q2, with K being a constant. So Q1 is inversely superpositional to Q2. An example of a problem uh, where the relationship between the two quantities is inverse superposition is this problem, where we have a total distance, some of it has been covered, and there is a remaining distance. So the remaining distance is equal to the total distance minus distance that we have covered. Now, this equation has the form of inverse superposition. Here, Q2 is the remaining distance. K, which is a constant, is the total distance, which could be something like the distance between two cities. 
that is fixed and q1 is the covered distance now based on my knowledge of inverse superposition problems and also their properties i can conclude that in this particular problem an increase or decrease in the value of distance covered by some amount forces a decrease or increase in the value of the remaining distance by the same amount and vice versa because there is symmetry I can take a look at the conservation form and conclude that the sum of the distance covered and the remaining distance is fixed equal to the total distance which is d and that's what the conservation form says the remaining distance and the covered distance add up to the total distance thank you very much for watching this video and in the next one i will tell you about the third simplest kind of relationship that we see these are direct proportion problems